Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. NAD levels go down with age, and at 50 are half the levels of when you're young. To increase our NAD levels, we're taking NMN. Although we also want to avoid NAD being destroyed by CD38. A pigeon, a plant flavonoid, has been shown to inhibit CD38 activity and so preserve NAD levels. As we mentioned in an earlier video, we were taking dried parsley as a source of a pigeon in, but we found that the amount we needed to take per our calculation was quite large. We also recently found a paper discussing the bioavailability of a pigeon in and the practicality of obtaining it from your diet. As the paper suggested, we have now switched to taking it as a supplement. Our liposomal epigenin from our Life by Science has just arrived. On the principle of starting with a minimal dose, we've begun with one capsule of 35 milligrams per the recommendation on the bottle. We may increase the dose later. In case anyone is interested, you can find a 10% discount link in the description. Let's have a look at some of the research regarding epigenin and CD38. Here is the paper of epigenin bioavailability. It's looking at epigenin as an anti-cancer drug, but what is interesting is that it is looking at bioavailability and the required concentrations of epigenin. When taken orally, epigenin is absorbed and it has a bioavailability of around 30%. It reaches a maximum circulating concentration in between half an hour and two and a half hours, and the half-life is two and a half hours. From in vivo experiments, they estimated an effective concentration to be one to five micromoles per liter, and then looked to see if based on the absorption data, reaching that concentration would be possible. Their conclusion is that reaching the required concentration through normal dietary inputs would require heroic ingestion amounts and was not practical, which was what we had also found. However, they calculated that supplements in semi-purified form could be safely taken that would reach sufficient levels in the blood to be effective. They also looked at modified formulations and injections. One of the modified formulations was liposomal. Here is the review of dietary epigenin intake, which for humans on average is 0.45 to 1.17 milligrams a day. There was a study by Dr. Helen Meyer and her colleagues where volunteers consumed about 35 grams of parsley a day to get approximately 18 milligrams of epigenin. This did lead to a plasma concentration that exceeded 100 nanomoles per liter between six to nine hours after the consumption and reached a maximum of 337 nanomoles per liter. So this was approaching the target of one to five micromoles per liter. However, this was 15 to 40 times more than people normally eat, and to actually hit the target would require about a hundredfold increase in normal consumption. Hence the suggestion that a supplement approach may be better. If you are going to take a supplement, what are the options to increase the bioavailability? There are emerging delivery mechanisms using nanoparticles and surfactants to increase the solubility. These Delivery systems increase the availability in a number of ways. Firstly, by protecting the drug inside a wrapper from degradation in intestinal tract. Secondly, improving absorption via the lymphatic system. Thirdly, providing protection from processing in the liver. Fourthly, providing a sustained release mechanism. And finally, in cancer cases, providing a site of action targeting. These effects would lead to improved delivery of epigenin. Indeed, liposomal formulations have shown increased efficacy against colorectal cancer, as described in this referenced paper. This is the paper that they referenced. Again, it's targeting cancer, but it is comparing the bioavailability of epigenin powder and liposomal form. One of the reasons for low bioavailability of epigenin is that it's hydrophobic which is to say it's not soluble in water. One of the ways around this in drug delivery is to wrap the drug in tiny fat balls called liposomes, which is what they did here. We've discussed them in more detail in another video. They did see that the liposomal form of epigenin was more pharmacologically active. Now let's have a quick look at some background on why CD38 is important and how epigenin can be used to inhibit it.
We'll start off with a clip from an interview that we did with Dr. Michael Lusgarden. In one of our interviews with Dr. Lusgarden, he talked about why inhibiting CD38 is vital to optimize NAD levels in our body. Here is a short clip from the interview. Well, uh, CD38 is a protein whose expression goes up with age that actually has been shown to degrade NAD and also to degrade NR and NMN. So from my perspective, if you're not going after uh, CD38 in that strategy to improve NAD, you may not be getting the maximum benefit or any benefit. So then the question is what increases CD38 during aging? One variable, again, going back to it is microbial burden. So uh, lipopolysaccharide, which is only found in the outer membrane of uh, gram negative bacteria. So a certain type of bacteria that are found in the body. Um, so these gram negative bacteria actually increase in our intestines. And um, there's more of uh, the translocation of that metabolite that's found in their uh, outer membrane in the blood during aging. So when you consider that, that would be one potential explanation for why CD, CD38 would increase during aging. So if you're going to take NR and NMN and not consider that you may have suboptimal gut barrier function leading to more of this LPS in your blood, leading to more CD, CD38, any NR and NMN that you're taking may be degraded by the CD38. As we just heard from Dr. Luscon, CD38 increases with age and has a negative effect on NAD levels. Let's have a look at this in more detail. I will use this paper, CD38 dictates age-related NAD decline and mitochondrial dysfunction through a cert 3 dependent mechanism as a guide. In general, we know that NAD goes down and CD38 goes up as we age. The NAD decline could be because less is made or more is destroyed or a combination of both. Before this paper, the details of this had not been investigated. In the case of consumption, we have three groups of enzymes, PARPs, sirtuins, and CD38, that could be responsible. In particular, they saw that CD38 is the main cause of degradation of NAD. However, the role of CD38 in age-related NAD decline has not been investigated. The paper shows that CD38 plays an active role in age-related NAD decline. One of the key pieces of evidence they have for this is that CD38 knockout mice, that is mice with CD38 removed genetically, had improved metabolic function during aging. They also showed that CD38 degrades NMN and removing it improves the response to NAD replacement therapy. Here this is graphically. We can see that the wild type mouse increased CD38 with age, while the CD38 knockout mouse did not. They were protected from the NAD decline, which had knock-on effects such as CD CERT3 activity. Their conclusion is that CD38 is the key enzyme that is causing the age-related NAD decline, and that inhibiting CD38 and applying NAD replacements may serve as a potential therapy for metabolic dysfunction and age-related diseases. So how to keep our CD38 levels in check? There are some chemicals which inhibit the activity of CD38. The first of these is pigeonin. A pigeonin is a flavone, a type of flavonoid which has been shown to inhibit CD38. Here we see the results of an in vitro test of CD38 activity in a solution with a pigeonin. We can see that the CD38 activity decreased in a dose-dependent manner with the increased concentration of a pigeonin.